In the previous video, we talked about how you could use custom integrations to sync data to Databox. Well, another way that you can do that is through spreadsheets. Databox connects to both Google Sheets and Excel so that you can track your spreadsheet data alongside your other channels. To quickly connect to either Google Sheets or Excel, you can just navigate here to the sidebar and then pick whichever one of those integrations you want to connect to. So if we first wanted to connect to Excel, we can click Excel and we would be presented with the pop-up. In the pop-up, we can see we have a few different ways to connect depending on our online storage. Plus, we also do have the option to manually upload an Excel file to our account. This is a really good option, for example, if you don't want to share access to the cloud or you don't have the right credentials to the cloud. In that case, you can just upload a file onto the upload field. There are some limitations on how the data is synced when using an Excel file upload. So for more information on that, just make sure you check out our help articles. Okay, but before we can even connect our sheets to Databox, we need to make sure that we formatted them correctly. So let's actually go ahead and check out one of the spreadsheets that I created on Google Sheets um, for to track product inventory. Okay, so here's my Google Sheets. Obviously, I know that your Google Sheets probably look a lot more populated than mine, but for the purpose of this video, I did want to keep it quite simple, and we're just using the example of an operation manager who's looking to track product inventory in Databox. So a few things I do want to mention. The first thing is that there are two ways that you can format your Google Sheets. You can do it either vertically or horizontally. I've chosen to format my data vertically, which means that each column is going to then represent either a value, a dimension or category, um, and a date field. When you're formatting your data vertically, you want to make sure that the first row of every column is labeled. So you'll see here that in the first row, I have date, product name, quantity and stock, reorder level, and total value. This will just make it a lot easier for us when we're creating metrics in Databox um, and that means that we'll also be able to use the wizard, which is uh, a tool that will just make it even easier for us to create these spreadsheet metrics. The second thing I want to make sure I mention is that when creating metrics in Databox through spreadsheet data, every metric needs to have a value and a date. So we, we wouldn't be able to create a metric based off of product name. If we were to create a metric based off of product name, our metric would have a date field, which is mandatory, a value field, which is also mandatory, and then a dimensional field, which is optional. So in this case, our dimensional optional field would be product name. The last thing I want to make sure to mention is that we want to make sure we group our columns accordingly. So if we have more than one dimension, we want to make sure that all the dimensional columns are next to each other and then all the value columns are next to each other. And preferably when building your sheet, you'd want date as your first column and other columns associated to date, like either uh, date and time. And then you'd want to have your dimension. So your product name in our example, we could even add another additional dimension like product category and then all your value columns. Okay. With our Google Sheets now formatted, let's jump back into the Databox account and actually get this connected. Okay, back in Databox to connect this Google Sheets, I would just select Google Sheets and connect now. I've actually already connected this Google Sheets before the video, so again, I won't be running through the whole authentication process with you, but you can make use of the help articles that are linked here. So you'll be able to find information on what the authentication looks like, any credentials or permission levels that you need to connect Google Sheets, um, and even how to format your Google Sheets so that you can quickly create metrics using our wizard. Okay, so with my Google Sheets now connected, let's actually go and find it under my data source connection list, and let's start building some metrics. Okay, so here's my sheet product inventory demo data, and to create metrics, I'm just going to select see all metrics again we're selecting see all metrics but we don't have any metrics available yet so to build a metrics i would just select the plus button under custom metrics okay so this is our google sheets wizard 
which essentially just makes it a lot easier for you to create spreadsheet data. You can see here already that based off of the labels that I've given on my columns and how I've grouped and formatted my Google Sheet, it's automatically labeled and picked up what values are in each column. So you'll see column A is date, column B it's picked up as my dimensions, C, D, and E as my values. So here in this example, we're going to be building a metric like quantity in stock by product so we can actually see how much stock we have of each product. So if I press continue, I can then just follow through the instructions. So here we want to select a metric value. We're looking, we're wanting to look at quantity and stock. So I'll just select this one or leave it as is. So because we want to see quantity and stock by product, I would then select the dimension and leave that one as is as well. And under my date, I would just leave that as is as well. I would select the date column, but in this case, it's picking up everything for me. So I can just select continue and here it would just give me a quick preview of what that metric would look like. I do have a few advanced ways that I can manipulate that metric by defining like how we want to aggregate that data and our values or even how we wanted to format our numbers. But for this case, I want to leave it as is. And then the last thing we could even define is our favorable trend. So if we want to say that if we have more quantity in stock, it's a positive thing. And if we're trending down is a negative thing. So again, we're just going to leave that as is because the more quantity we have in stock, the better. With this metric now done, we can just go ahead and press continue. And that's it. We've created our first Google Sheets metric. You can then continue to follow these steps and create more metrics off of your spreadsheet data.